This video will talk about four main things, the product and quotient rules, other trigonometry derivatives, higher order derivatives, and particle motion, which will talk about position, velocity, and acceleration. First things first, let's talk about the product rule. The product rule is a rule which we will use to take the derivative of two functions that are multiplied with each other. So here we have f, and we're going to multiply it by g, and the derivative, uh, you might guess, well, you might guess it's just f prime times g prime, because you just multiply the derivatives, right? That seems logical. Unfortunately, it is not right, um, and please don't write this because this answer Yes, it kills kittens, and we don't want to do that. Well, how do we figure out what the product rule is? Well, one way is to think about um, what f times g really is. And if you think about it, f times g represents an area, where you could have this side length being f, and the height of this rectangle being g. And then um, when we take the derivative, the question is asking, how does this area change if we add on a little piece of f? And the way we're going to do that is with a df. df is sort of like delta f, so it's a, it's a, you can think of it as a small change in f. So we're going to go ahead and draw in a, a little a width that's about delta f. And same thing with g. We're going to draw in, we're going to extend the rectangle in the g direction, and this is going to be dg. And now this shaded green area is the change in the area once we change f and we change g. Well, let's figure out what that area is. In order to do that, I'm going to basically just multiply the whole side, which is f plus df. So we have f plus df, and I'm going to multiply that with the g side, so g plus dg. That will give me the area of the whole rectangle, and then I'm going to subtract off the middle part, which is simply f times g. So after multiplying this, I'm going to subtract f times g. Well, let's see what this gives us. We'll foil this out, so we'll have fg from the first, df times g from the inner, dg times f from the outer, plus df times dg from the very n terms. And don't forget that we are also subtracting fg, because that was the area of the original rectangle, that one there. Uh, so let's go ahead and simplify this. So this fg will cancel with this fg, because it's fg minus fg. And then um, really, df and dg are both, you can think of them as like infinitesimally small changes in those functions. And if we multiply two infinitesimally small things, that change is essentially negligible. So we're really going to ignore the df times dg term. Uh, and what we're left with is this funky looking thing, which is df times g plus dg times f. Uh, check it out. So using this idea with the rectangle, we can now say that the derivative of f times g, where f and g are both functions of f, is this, what we ended up with. Now we have to convert this back a little bit. So df is really the derivative of f. So we can call it f prime, g is just g, and then plus dg, well dg is simply g prime, and f is just f. So the product rule says that the derivative of f times g, where f and g are both functions of x, is equal to f prime g plus g prime f. Uh, and that's the way I remember it in my head, I just say f prime g plus g prime f is a good kind of rhymey mnemonic way if you want to remember it that way. Uh, but yeah, this is the product rule, the official one, so yay. Just for the record, there is no unofficial product rule. Uh, if you want to say that this is the product, the unofficial product rule, then you're a kitten killer, and that's bad. Just like the product rule, there is also a quotient rule, which takes the derivative of, not the product, but the quotient of two functions. So we have f divided by g, and here we're assuming that f and g are both functions of f, or sorry, functions of x, and that g uh, doesn't equal zero, because that's silly, and dividing by zero and all that stuff. Uh, unfortunately, there isn't a nice picture to go along with this one. However, there is a very nice mnemonic. Uh, we're going to think of f as the high, hi guys, uh, 
and G is the low, the low, like that, high and low. Okay, so we have a high function and a low function, and the pro or sorry, the quotient rule goes like this: low d high minus high d low. Draw the line and square below. <laughs> Get it? So it's low d high minus high d low. Draw the line and square below is the quotient rule. Uh, written out with our f and g, this becomes uh, g f prime minus f g prime all divided by g squared. Notice that the bottom is not a derivative, it's just low squared. Uh, so this is the mathy way of saying the quotient rule. So low d high minus high d low, draw the line square below. And yes, the order is important because if you do f prime or f g prime minus g f prime, you get it wrong, because you can't switch these two without doing nasty things to the negative sign. So make sure that you remember it as low d high minus high d low, draw a line square below, and you'll be good to go. Trig, yep, it's back, everybody's favorite, uh, but the combination product and quotient rules are very useful for figuring out trigonometry derivatives. Let's say that we want to find the derivative of tangent of x. We don't know what it is, but we can find it, because remember, tangent is sine over cosine. Hmm, well, we have two functions, sine and cosine. Are they added, subtracted, multiplied, or divided? Uh, and in this case, they're clearly divided. Right? That's a whole, like, division symbol thing. So we can use the quotient rule. So here's how it works. Low d high minus high d low. Low d high minus high d low. Draw the line and square below. So this is how the product or the quotient rule quotient rule works out. Now, oftentimes when you're doing the product rule or the quotient rule, you'll have to evaluate other derivatives, including like the original one. So here, when we do low d high, guess what? We have to do the derivative of sine x and the derivative of cosine x. Let's go ahead and work those out. So cosine x times well, the derivative of sine x is, well, if you remember back to last time, it's just cosine x. So you have cosine x times cosine x minus sine x, that was the high, uh, and then the derivative of cosine, that's going to be negative sine, if you recall. And then we're going to draw the line and square below. That stays the same, cosine squared x. Uh, let's see if this simplifies it all. Oh, yes, it does. Look at that. We have a negative times a negative, so that's going to give us a plus on the inside. And so we have cosine x times cosine x. Pretty sure there's a way to rewrite that. And then sine x times sine x, there's a way to rewrite that too. Watch closely. We get the cosine squared x plus sine squared x divided by cosine squared x. Oh, but that, that's just one. That's one of our identities. So the co we get one over cosine squared x, uh, and one over cosine is the same as secant. So this is secant squared of x. Woo! So the derivative of tangent is simply secant squared, and you can either remember that by itself or remember the quotient rule, because you'll have to anyway, and work through it again. Uh, the other four, or the other three trigonometry derivatives are all similar. They all use the quotient rule, so you can go ahead and use those to figure them out. That's part of your homework. Uh, they are also on the next slide. Here are those other three derivatives. Uh, notice that cotangent and cosecant always go together uh, in these derivatives, and secant and tangent always go together. Uh, and then the other thing about the cotangent and cosecant is that this negative sh sign shows up in both. So uh, however you want to remember these, uh, do it that way. Flashcards work well. Or remember that you can always just start with the quotient rule for each of these and rederive. Um, the actual derivatives. It takes a little bit more time, but it always works. I'm going to talk very briefly about higher order derivatives, because all we've been doing right now is just the first derivative, but there are higher ones. And so there can be uh, second derivatives, third derivatives, fourth derivatives, like the 800th derivative, etc. Um, we're only going to really focus on the first, second, and third as a general thing, um, but let's look at an example. Let's say we have 2x to the fourth plus sine x. Uh, the first derivative, remember that it's f prime, 
Okay, we go to f, f prime. Uh, and this is going to be the power rule, so we'll bring down the 4. 4 times 2 is 8. And then we're going to subtract 1 from the 4, so it's 8x cubed. The derivative of sine is just positive cosine, so that's all we write. Uh, and then remember that the relationship between a function and its derivative is that the derivative is the slope of the previous function. All right, but then we could also take the second derivative. So let's say we have f double prime. And to find f double prime, it's really easy. You just take the derivative of the first derivative. So we just do it again. Bring down the 3. 3 times 8 is 24. So we have 24x squared. And then the derivative of positive cosine is negative sine of x. Uh, and just to think about what that is. Well, the second derivative represents the slope of the first derivative, because it's the derivative of a function. Um, but it also has a connection to the original function. And the relationship between the original function and the second derivative is something called uh, concavity. And we don't really have to know much about that for now. Uh, we'll delve deeper into it later in the course. But uh, concavity is the relationship between the first derivative, or sorry, the original function and its second derivative. Uh, we can keep going. So the third derivative, note it's like it's f triple prime, f double prime, etc. Uh, bring down the 2, so we have 48x, and then the derivative of negative sine is negative cosine of x. Again, we have the same slope relationship here, uh, and we can keep going. So like the fourth derivative would be f4. You don't want to say prime, 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 because that's too many things. Uh, and that's just going to be 48 plus sine x. And really, you can keep going for as many derivatives as you want. So that's there. Looking at some other notation, uh, we have the f double prime, uh, and so this is the second derivative here because there's two primes. And you might also see it written as this. We have our d dx from before, but now to do second derivative, we're just going to put a squared on the d and a squared on the x. So d squared, dx squared, uh, and then you could have a function like f of x, for example. Um, the weird way to see it uh, is the same way. It's d over dx like that. Uh, and sometimes we'll have like dy dx, but that squared is still on the d and the x. So it's not dy squared, it's d squared y dx squared. Um, an alternative for this is just y double prime, the second derivative of y with respect to x. Last thing to talk about is motion. Uh, so we're talking about position, velocity, and acceleration. First off, position is just position, so it's where you are at a certain time. S of t is usually how it's uh, done. Other, other ways you might see it are x of t or y of t, depending upon if it's traveling along an axis, something like that. Uh, we'll see those as the year goes by. And position answers the question, where are you, basically. It's at uh, where you are. If you want to think of a highway analogy, it's uh, your mile marker. So it's not how fast you're going, it's at what mile marker you're at. Let's say you're at a given mile marker, but obviously that mile marker is changing. Well, maybe. Uh, but that means that your position is also changing. And so we introduce a new thing called velocity. And velocity is the change in position divided by your change in time. Uh, but this is calculus, so this is actually a derivative definition. And so velocity is the derivative with respect to time of position. Uh, and another way you might see this is just s prime of t, like that. s prime of t is velocity. Um, and this is how fast you're going and in what direction. Now for calculus, it's different from physics, so we're not going to worry about vectors. Uh, so it's either positive velocity or negative velocity. And then the last thing is, well, how is your um, velocity changing? And that is something called acceleration. And acceleration is simply the change in, oops, change in velocity, v of t, divided by time. So change in velocity over time. Uh, and we usually denote velocity as a of t. 
And so, well, it's delta, it's delta v over delta t, but this is calculus, so this is a, another derivative. So acceleration is the first derivative of velocity, so it's d dt of velocity. Uh, we could also call this v prime of t. Oh, but remember that velocity was the first derivative of position. So we take the first derivative of position, s prime, and we're taking the derivative again. So acceleration is also the second derivative of position. Uh, so we have this relationship here where, where you have position, velocity is the first derivative of position, and then acceleration is the first derivative of velocity, which is also the second derivative of position. And uh, this is about all the physics that you'll have to know for the exam. Um, but yeah, it's pretty simple because it's just a derivative relationship.